Durian is the king of fruits in Asia, and demand is off the charts. The value of durian imports in China is now greater than cherries and bananas combined. Farmers in Malaysia are cashing in on the craze, and even the royal family wants in. But this growing business has come at a cost. Now, small farmers are stuck in a ruthless land battle with a big corporation and the local government. So why is this smelly fruit causing so much conflict? We went to Malaysia to investigate the true cost of one of Asia's most popular fruits. A state government in Malaysia cut 15,000 durian trees. This is public land, and these farms are not technically legal. But farmers cultivated these trees for generations without problem. And they're the ones who popularized this special variety of durian, Musang King. It sold for an average $32.50 a pound in Malaysia during the 2021 season. That's more than double this season's average price for live Maine lobster. Farmers like Tom Wai Kiat say the destruction of durian farms is a scare tactic to either push them off the land or sign an unfair contract. Tan's father started growing durian here in the early 2000s. Tan took over the farm a decade ago, but in July, he lost everything. This is the first time Tan has seen his durian trees since they were destroyed. One TikTok video that went viral in Malaysia appears to show state authorities cutting down durian trees. This is what farmers saw when they returned to their land. Tan now works at a durian collection stall in Raub, a township of 100,000 people known as the durian capital of Malaysia. The fruits undergo a careful quality check here before it's picked up by local and international buyers. Tan says it's easy for him to tell good fruit from bad fruit since he's worked with durian most of his life. That's critical because buyers selling durian to countries like China expect the fruit to be flawless. The best durians come from trees that are more than a decade old. Workers look through up to 400 baskets of durian a day during the peak seasons, which run from July to September and December to March. The majority of durians exported out of this region end up in Singapore. Kelvin Tan runs the operation here at 99 Old Trees. He started this durian business in 2017. This storefront is just a small part of Kelvin's operation. He also sells wholesale frozen durian to buyers in China. Kelvin says business has never been better. Traditionally, every durian season, a lot of Singaporeans will travel up to Malaysia to eat durians there because it's cheaper there, right? Because of this pandemic, uh, most of these, they have no choice but to just eat in Singapore. That is why it has actually resulted in a higher sales for us. Tan sells nearly a dozen varieties of durian during peak harvest season. He's meticulous about the quality of the fruit. In a good Musang King, what we look out for is, number one, the colour, fragrance. Like when, the moment you open the durian, there should be a whiff of fra fragrance. And of course, uh, the creaminess. So, check out the creaminess. Okay, so this is an example of durian that cannot pass our quality control. These are all semi-ripe flesh. The taste is pretty awful. So for this kind of uh, substandard durian, we will have to reject them. Kelvin's team sells up to 4,000 pounds of durian a day, up from nearly 900 in 2018. He says increasing Chinese demand and loosening regulations fundamentally changed the durian business. China imported a record $2.3 billion worth of durian in 2020, a number that has quadrupled since 2017. Farmers in Raub struggle to keep up with demand. Chiang Heng-mun has farmed durian for more than a decade. 
In July, the state government tore down two thirds of his trees. Today, he's picking up the last durians of the season. The trees Chang lost were the ones his father planted more than 20 years ago. Now he has 240 trees left on seven acres of licensed land. It's barely enough to support his wife, parents, and two children. The conflict began in 2020. That's when the government leased more than 5,000 acres of land in Raub to a private company, Royal Pahang Durian Group. Its biggest shareholder, the Malaysian royal family. The royal family, the state government, and the corporation are working together, and they've given farmers just two options, get off the land or sign a contract that caps profits, forces them to work, and gives them less money for small harvests. The 30 years period of the contract, you need to work inside your land. Abandon your land, you may be penalized. This is Chao Yu Hui. He's a state assemblyman for Raub's Chaz district. The Royal Pound Durian Legalization Scheme is an unequal and unfair contract or scheme to the farmers that treated the farmers as a modern slave. Chao has been advocating for durian farmers for the past year. This is the action by the state government to create the fear among the farmers and force them to sign the unequal contract with the Royal Pound Durian. Farmers refused to sign the contract and filed a lawsuit instead. They also organized to form the Save Musang King Alliance. The state government told local journalists that the trees it cut down were in a national forest preserve. Farmers argue that the land was protected by a January court decision. The state that governs Raub declined to comment to Insider, as did Royal Pahang Durian Group, citing an ongoing lawsuit with farmers. Malaysia's durian business continues to expand. Royal Pahang Durian Group plans to build the largest durian processing facility in Malaysia. And by 2030, the country's durian exports are expected to increase by 50%. But will small farmers see any of the profits? Or will the durian craze cost them everything?